So, all right, so today we're gonna to talk about why you should be using email marketing, uh, the power of the, of the inbox and why it's so good. And then we're gonna put it all together at the end. So like Ronnie said, okay, I'm in Stony Brook, which is really close to the SBDC. And um, I'm a certified local expert and speaker for Constant Contact. And even though this email marketing is sort of presented through Constant Contact, it's overall generic for any email marketing service that you might be using. So why should you be using email? Well, the most obvious is yes, it works. And here are some of the reasons why. I have some statistics that I love. Compared to social media, email marketing is 40 times more effective than Facebook and Twitter combined. It has a high ROI, which means return on investment for every dollar spent on email marketing. Um, there's actually, it's actually gone up. This, uh, this information is from 2015, but it's actually 40 to $42. And they found actually during the pandemic that the email is on the rise as far as readability and people read it. Uh, I would say that 100% of people check their email daily. 88% uh, regularly check email on their smartphones. And most of us, so I definitely need, I do, check emails throughout the day. Uh, that's probably what I do most when it comes to uh, work and, and the computer. I don't check my voicemail as much. I don't check social media, but email is, you know, I don't, get notifications, I look for them, but it's usually my email inbox is one of the tabs that it's kept open uh, along with the 50 other ones that I keep open. Uh, it's reliable. Okay, so 90% of the time your email gets delivered, which is really high. And with social media, you're getting about one to 2% of people who follow you who are actually seeing the information that you're sharing in their feed. Uh, Facebook relies on the algorithm that lets people know what they're, who they're interacting with. And if they're not interacting with you on a regular basis, then you're not gonna be seen on their feed. So the more that you interact with somebody, the more likely they're gonna see more of what you're offering. Just a little tidbit. So email marketing is basically a, a communications that is professional looking, it provides value to an interested audience. Um, that's basically what it is. It's to get the message out there for you to get a message, communication, and also to get a, elicit a response from someone. Here are some of the things, the positives and what it can do, right? It creates and increases awareness of your business. So if somebody doesn't know about you, and again, if they're not seeing you on social media, um, you would want to be able to get them as a subscriber so that you can provide more value. Uh, it's so much easier to send out an email with a little more information than you can with a post, uh, especially like for um, Instagram. There's a limited amount of characters you can use on Instagram. There's a, a very limited amount um, um, on Twitter. Most people have to abbreviate or edit what they want to say. You can, you can add whatever you want in email marketing. It can drive revenue and profit. So you can decide to have a discount or a quick offer, create an email in 15 minutes if you're you know, experienced and you can make a sale pretty much immediately. And then also it helps to um, get you recognized and boost repeat business from customers you already have. It's a, a known fact that it's easier to do business with people that you're already doing business with than to find new customers. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the power of the inbox and a little bit about first impressions. And I'm going to compare regular email, like when you're using Gmail or Yahoo, or even there are some people still using AOL and the first impressions do matter. So the question is, are you sending your emails through your, you know, are you using email marketing for business through your regular email clients or are you using it through a service? Um, and this is the difference on the left-hand side is your regular email. And then on the right side is your pretty flowers. And then this is the actual uh, comparison. These are two identical um, content emails. And the one on the left is through, I can't see it, but it's a regular email client, even with my glasses on. And the one on the right is what a professional looking email through any service, whether you're using um, uh, AWeber or MailChimp or Constant Contact, 
Uh, most of them will look like the one on the right where you can create branding. Now the one on the left is just all words. So, and also if you look at the top, it shows all the people that are receiving the email, which is um, not a good thing to do. You don't want other people to see who you're sending to. You, and here's, the, here's where the differences come in. So this is the same email. So there's limited sending capabilities. Uh, you're not allowed, um, and I don't know how many it is now, but I think with Google, it's like, it used to be 50. You could send an email to 50 people at a time. I think one time I tried before I got into doing email services, um, tried to send out maybe a, you know, an email to 100 people for something I was telling them. And I not only did my account get flagged, but I wasn't able to send past the 50 people. And that's one of the, um, the limited sending options. There's no formatting. You, um, if you want to add a picture, you basically have to send it as an attachment. People don't like to open attachments anymore because that's where you will find uh, viruses. Um, Filtering, uh, a lot of times regular email, if it's sent out to so many people, it'll go into spam. There's no branding, there's no colors. Um, I, one of the biggest thing is also your call to action. Um, if you just look at the email and you glance over it, there's nothing that stands out. I, I know that there's a link there, which would be the call to action, but when you have a professional looking email, you can make it stand out uh, the way that you want. In a regular email, the only option is to have um, the highlight in the blue, in the blue coloring. So you want to uh, look professional. You want to brand your colors. Uh, you want to make it so that it's enticing when people open it, and they, once they open it, they want to read it. So ways ways that you can do that is to reinforce your brand identity by using your branding colors, using your branding words. You know, keep the language uh, that you use uh, both in social media and on your emails as well. It's great to manage your subscriptions because you're able to then bring value to specific uh, lists and people who want to hear certain things from you. So I do a little bit of, I do mostly email marketing. We also do web design, we do social media. So I have specific lists for um, people who need email tips as opposed to people who aren't using email and they're using social media. So I segment the list and I'm able to pro provide more value to those specific lists, okay? So that's what it means by manager subscriptions. Uh, ensuring email delivery, again, uh, Constant Contact has a 95% plus deliverability rate. Uh, regular email, I don't know exactly what it is, but it's under under 90%, I think it's like 80 something. Um, I think the, the biggest thing, and I'll go through this later, is tracking the results so that you can make decisions. I mean, let's put it this way, a strategy is basically where you're trying to figure out what's working, what's not working. So you can either improve it or uh, make changes. So when you have reporting statistics that come back from your service, you can figure out lots of different things like who's opening your email, how many people are opening it, what's the percentage, how did it compare to the last email? And I'm gonna go further into that. I think reporting is so underrated and underused by people I've talked to people who have had email marketing for years and they never ever look at their reporting. That makes no sense to me because that's how you're gonna figure out your strategy going forward. Excuse so, me, Sue, so, yeah. so we, we have a question. Great. Uh, Leslie is asking, she's wondering if there's a lot more distrust these days for social media. She doesn't use social media except for Facebook classes. And also she had a very, very encouraging chat for you. Oh, okay. Thank you. You're um, okay. So the first part of the question was, um, does, do we find uh, social media? What was that? What was it again? She's wondering if there's a lot more distrust these days for social media. Um, it depends on distrust for, for what? I think that, um, and I'm not going to get into this further, but with, uh, with politically based, I think because there's, um, there was a lot of back and forth and, and well, there can be a lot of obviously fake information. People say, oh, the, everything is true on the internet. That's probably a very false statement. Um, so there, is, there can be distrust depending on where you're going on social media. You know, there are certain groups that you probably want to avoid. You probably have certain groups that 
you feel uh, very tr trustful in. So it depends on where you're going on social media. Um, you can get distracted and fooled by certain sponsored ads. So you wanna make sure you know the difference between what a sponsored ad looks like compared to an organic uh, post. Um, so yes, there can be, um, but you have to know where to look and what to look for on the specific platforms. Thank you for that question. So growing your list, let's get into um, about growing your list because uh, the truth is there's, there's money in your list. So you need to know how to grow your list. And there's different ways to do that. And there's also rules to follow. So first you wanna get consent from the person that you're adding to your email list. You don't want to go to an event, and I don't know how many people are going to events right now, and collect business cards. And then, you know, I've seen this before where I go to an event the next day, I'm getting an email from someone. I'm like, well, how did I get on this list? And then I'm like, oh, I think I saw them yesterday at an event. Okay, that is not what you want to do. You want to make sure that um, <clears throat> you're being straightforward so that when somebody does subscribe to your email list, in the thank you for somebody signing up, you want to let them know how often are they going to be hearing from you? You know, will you be sending them weekly emails, monthly emails, quarterly emails, and what are you going to be sending in the emails? These things, these, this is part of the strategy. Okay. Every email has to have an offer of, to opt out. And usually uh, you'll see it at the bottom. It'll say unsubscribe or update your preferences. Uh, some people are able to put into the account, um, specific lists that you might want to unsubscribe from. And then of course, there's always the option to opt out of the entire list. Respect people's privacy. Let them know that you will not be sharing their email address with anybody. Uh, most people don't do that these days. That was a big thing in the past, but that's still important. And there's actually a lot of uh, legal compliance when it comes to email marketing and you can do a Google search on that and, and I can't get it into all of those things. Um, but it has a lot to do with spam and how to use email and actually what kinds of things can go into your emails as well as what will not be allowed. So asking online, uh, this is an example of somebody who has an email uh, sign up form on their website. And then these are the three steps. Um, first, you create an email sign up form and you can do this in any email marketing service. This one is obviously from Constant Contact. So they create this like landing page or sign up form. And then if you look at number one, it says, um, you know, it magnifies, you know, where, where the button is for somebody to join the list. You join the list, uh, you click on join our list. And then here is the information that this person is collecting. So they have email address, first name, last name, phone number, and then they wanna know a little bit more about the person. So you can ask uh, as many questions as you want. However, it's mandatory only to have the email address when you're using the service. The more, and also here's another tip, the more questions that you ask people, the less likely they're going to sign up because people don't wanna give out A, too much information. They don't wanna read everything. They don't want to fill out everything because the attention spans of humans is like teeny tiny. <laughs> so yeah, keep that in mind because I'm sure you guys feel the same way. When you have to fill out, you know, long forms or surveys, you sort of say, at first you're like, yeah, I'll do it. And then when you see how long a survey is, sometimes you change your mind. Oh, sorry. Okay. And then the third, um, the third screen here is the the thank you. So it says welcome, thank you. And then once somebody signs up again you can telling them like how often you might be here they might be hearing from you and then what kind of value you're going to be giving them you can give them an offer in the very first email as well so in this case in the thank you they're showing uh, a little more value by providing a video to get to know them better because email marketing and, and social media all marketing is about the, the no like and trust factor you want to build on that to make connections in order to make sales. Okay, and then why should somebody join your email list? What is it that you provide? Now, for everybody, it's different. You could have only one of these options. You could have two of them. You could have a combination. You can have 
all of them if you want. Um, you can mix it up. So if you're looking for a strategy, let's just say you're sending out, you want to send out emails once a week because you have that kind of time. Um, you may decide, hey, I like all of these. I, I can give education. Um, I can give some VIP deals. I can give some um, insider things that I'm not going to give to people on social media. Um, guides are pretty easy to create. Uh, obviously, updates and the discounts. So if you wanted to, you could use this formula right here. Uh, uh, you know, once a week, you're going to give on Mondays. Uh, I'm sorry, no. This would be every six weeks. So uh, the first week you would give the education. The second week you might give the VIP preference. Uh, third week you might do insider news. Um, you can also include three of these in one email. And I'm gonna go into a little bit about the length of your emails and, and also uh, formatting of your emails. Just make sure that whatever you're doing, you're giving them content that is relevant. When you unsubscribe, when somebody unsubscribes from an email list, there, there is an option that says, you know, this content is no longer relevant. Um, that's important for people to know because then the chain, it lets them know, hey, I need to change my strategy to give more value, you know, to my subscribers. So remember that it's about them. It's about your subscribers and not yourself when you're figuring out, you know, the kind of content that you should be sending out. Remember, what is the reason why somebody had opted into your email in the first place, okay? So let's just say it was educational information. Well, now you know, oh, this person likes educational information. So that's something that you're going to wanna to build on going forward. So these are some of the things you need to focus on. Being relevant, sending the content that they wanna hear about, figuring out how much information in your email is enough turning people's questions into your content if you're at a loss for content, because sometimes, sometimes people have, you know, um, they go blank and they say, what should I, you know, I don't know what to write about, I need a strategy, um, but you can turn some questions. And then also images or content as well. So I'm gonna touch upon each one of these to go into a little bit more detail to give you some more ideas. 38% of people will unsubscribe to your list if they find that it's boring or irrelevant. And 32% will send it to spam if it's actually irrelevant. So I'd love to add a little bit of statistics because it makes you think about things that you should and shouldn't be doing. So talking about the amount of content, um, there is a formula that, again, Constant Contact uses. They, people have sent out million, they have millions of, of emails that have gone out and they do cert, they survey customers and, and people to find out you know, what's working and what's not working. So this is what they found. 20 lines of text is enough to have in your email. Uh, having three pictures or less got the most opens. Having fewer than five clicks, um, actually three is probably the most you should include. You can hide links. Sometimes it doesn't have to be a button, but if you're having more than one link, you wanna create a, like a contrasting button because that's gonna be your main call to action. So a main call to action might be something like, uh, read my blog, visit my website, um, get this discount, sign up, sign up for this class, you know, register here. Those are all um, calls to action. However, if like, let's just say the SBDC said re register here, they had a button, but they also wanted you to visit their website. Somewhere in the email and preferably in the logo at the top of the page, you would wanna have that to be clickable. So it goes to the website. Now it's not shown as a link, it's not obvious, but if somebody happens to hover over, they'll see that it is a link. Or you can have the link at the bottom of the email or your email address at the bottom of the email. And again, it's just gonna be like this here where it's light blue. So it's not so much jarring or standing out to you, it's sort of hidden. But if you have too many of them, it's going to confuse the person. And then that's when people don't take action when they feel overwhelmed. So that's something you wanna keep in mind. And using content, make sure that the content that you use is also relevant to the content in your email. Okay, 90% of information process is visual. Uh, so make sure that your pictures are um, you know, in focus, they're vibrant, they're good quality. Um, you get them from reputable sources. 
um, avoid uh, special copyright issues. Of course, you use your own photos. Try to keep them, uh, you can also use filters to keep them in with your branding. So there's like blue filters, purple filters, orange, you know, it's a little haze. And you can add also like if you have pictures of yourself, because um, a lot of people like to see the business owner, you know, you can wear your branding colors as well. So um, a couple of stock sites that you could use are like Shutterstock. Um, these are paid sites. So there's Shutterstock, um, uh, Big Stock, um, Getty Images, that's like really expensive, but that's really, really high end. Then there are some uh, that are free or, or low cost. Um, the low cost ones usually are like subscription service. So you might get 25 or 10 photos, you know, per month for 10 or $20. So sites like Deposit Photo, um, I'm trying to think of some others. There's a, there's a lot of them, but you can just do a search for that. Your email marketing service should have a library of photos as well, both paid and free. Um, I've never had to go outside of Constant Contact to find any um, photos that I wasn't able to use for free. Um, but I also have another, I, I do some social media management. So I have other photo um, sites that I use that are free. And um, you can find good photos as well. Although, you know, the free ones, you have to do more of a search because they, they won't come up as quickly as like a shutter stock. If you put in, if you put in like, um, um, I don't know, sunrise, you'll immediately find like the perfect picture on Shutterstock that you'll pay $8 for. But if you look for it for free on Pixabay, uh, you might have to search a couple of pages. So it's, a, it's based on, you know, how much um, is your time worth? So a couple of um, resources is uh, Pixabay, which is P-I-X-A-B-A-Y for free photos that you don't have to even um, attach anybody's name or give credit. The other one is uh, Pixels, which is P-E-X-E-L-S. And the third one that I use and am familiar with is called Unsplash. Uh, they all provide free use anywhere that you wanna use them. But it is worth, if, if you're using um, photos that you want to purchase, then the best thing to do is to compare uh, the pricing when you go on some of the free sites, they actually have um, sponsored um, ads on them from like Shutterstock and the other sites with a discount just for going to the free site. So that's a little bit about how to use photos. Um, make the images clickable. Like I said, uh, the this, this example here is a great vacation retreat. So that's their logo. Um, make it clickable. You can't tell that it's a link. Um, but like I said, people hover over emails and they can see once they hover over it that uh, this little pointer will become a hand. Keep key action above the scroll line. And I don't know if you can see my, can you see my pointer? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the, um, the key action. Um, I would have made this stand out a little more probably using like this dark color here or even this dark color. Um, from to me, it doesn't stand out so much, but it's just showing you here that this is the scroll line. You know, once you have to start scrolling up, uh, you want to be able to have uh, place that call to action before that, because you want to have everything right on the, the front page. And the reason, again, is because of attention spans. You know, people don't want to scroll forever. And then limit, again, limit the choices. Um, how many links you have, how many pictures, you know, you don't wanna to do too many pictures either. Try to keep it as streamlined as possible. And then however your branding is, you wanna keep it the same for the mobile phone, for a tablet and different desktops as well. When you create an email in Constant Contact, there's an option, which I'm sure other services have this too, where you do a preview and you can actually see that how it's going to look differently on the mobile phone compared to a desktop. And they also, I believe they have a tablet now too. Yeah, they have a tablet as well. So you can see how it's going to look and then you can adjust and do the editing to make it look better if you think it needs to look better. Um, my, my advice is to keep your logo to the left or the center because sometimes when you get to the phone, it might show that it's under it. Um, you can see here that 
the call to action on the desktop is actually above the scroll line. And then on the mobile phone, you can see there's more information below. So that's the difference here. And then keep the branding consistent as well. Okay, so this is how, um, this is actually a successful email design based on research. So one is a single column template fewer than three images. And I'm going to break this down um, with this email. Fewer than 20 lines of text, uh, less than three or five links, and keeping action above the scroll line. So in this case, um, the call to action here is sign up today. And they took this dark purple. So you can see it's contrasting, but it's still within their branding. And they, they have a second link, view videos on our website. So they wanted to show that there's more information, but instead of putting the video actually, you know, in the email, important is to sign up for their class. And then the secondary option is to view the videos to find out, you know, more about them and solidify their, their offering. Okay. Now paying attention, uh, how to get people to actually open your emails. These are the four things. We will get into these further as well. Uh, recognizing, you know, who's a, who is the email coming from? You know, who is sending it? Uh, making your subject line stand out, okay? Sending your emails at the right time. And then easy sharing options um, on social media. So one by one, we're gonna go through this. So who's the email from, okay? Well, how do, you, how do people know you? Do they know you by only, is your first name so incredibly uh, memorable that people will know that it's just you, okay? Well, my name is so basic. Um, there's no way that people would know that the email is coming from me if I just said, you know, Sue as the sender. So what I actually do is people know me by my uh, first and last name. Some people know me by my business name. Some people have no idea that I, what my business name is. A lot of people know that I'm a certified local expert and it's really long, but I, I put it in there. Uh, sometimes I'll put my first name, my last name. Sometimes I'll put first name, last name, company name. Sometimes I'll do first name, last name, constant contact. So I change it up and you can always do that. Um, you can change up who the email is from also based on the people that you're sending the email to. So make sure that they're both recognizable, your name and also your email address. So more than one third of people open an email based on the subject line. We're gonna get into subject lines and how to make them stand out some more. So the first tip is to keep your email subject line short. Again, it has to do with two things, attention span, and also being able to read exactly what the subject line is within the space that you have um, allotted. So 30 to 40 characters maximum, six to 10 words, and you can leave a lot of words out. Um, you know, look at some of the emails that you have in your inbox. You know, what made you open them? Write those down and use them and, you, you know, make them your own, but use the type of subject line that somebody's using that would make you open them, okay? And then there's something called pre-header text. I'm gonna get into as well. Excuse me. Sometimes water is just so yummy. Okay, so you want to entice them by using, this is called the pre-header text, okay? Even though it's in the email, it actually will show up as part of your email subject line. So you can customize that. And here's how it shows. So this is, this is our, the actual email, and this is how it shows um, in your inbox. So let's go back. Half Moon Yoga Studio. And the pre-header is aspire to higher ground. And here it is on the mobile phone. It says who it's from. And then it says acro yoga, that's the subject line. And then the second part is the preview text, aspire to higher ground, join us. Um, I, I had one of these yesterday where I thought I saw the pre-header text, but I didn't see it in the email. So I don't know why it shows 
and it was constant contact. So I'm not sure why sometimes it shows and sometimes it doesn't, but I went back and I was like, oh, that, that's, that is pretty cool though. So um, these are words to avoid in your subject line. Um, another tip I have is look inside of your spam email inbox and look at some of the subject lines that you get that repel you. Um, I get quite a few um, emails, spam, spam email that comes in. Uh, some of it makes it into my inbox. Most of it doesn't, but I go through them because there are certain things that go there all the time. I can't control that. That's just how Gmail is. Um, but use like words like these, you should be avoiding. Um, you can use words in place of some of these words. So instead of act now, it could be something like um, read before, I don't know, read, read before time runs out or something. Um, you know, when is about gambling. So that's usually going to be going to your, your spam. So you might want to say uh, something like, instead of when you could say, uh, you got the gold, I don't know, something like that. Um, refunds. I always get spam that says, uh, you got a refund or here's your refund check or blah, blah. <clears throat> no good. You also don't want to use a lot of um, <clears throat> punctuation like exclamation points or question marks. Okay. And definitely don't use all caps because everybody knows that's shouting. So after you get off, um, after we finish the workshop, go into your spam and write down some of the things that you see there and then keep that as a reference for what not to do. Okay, so here's another statistic that's really interesting. If you have social media share buttons, the, the click-through rate gets increased by 150%. What are some people who don't click on certain links in my email, but I have a couple of people who every single time will click on my social media links. So it's important to include those. And now we're going to get into reporting. You know, what are the statistics that matter? And then use that data to make the decisions going further. You know, what's going to be better? Oops. Oh, oh boy. Hold on. Um, you know, what can you make better and what decisions can you change? Okay. And then you're going to focus on the call to action, which is also known as the click through. And again, I said earlier that people underutilize, uh, under <laughs> underuse their metrics. So it's really important to keep that in mind. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about opens. And again, we did this with, uh, you know, how to get opens by um, making your subject line better. So what do opens actually do? I actually created a post yesterday on, um, I'm going to share it to LinkedIn, on Instagram about these next two slides. So when somebody opens your email, it lets you know that they're interested, right? Otherwise they wouldn't have opened it. So you probably had a good subject line. Uh, opens also lets you know that um, if a lot of people opened it, that it was a good time or a good day to send that email. The industry average for an open rate is between eight and 28%. Most of the time people will say that they get like a 16 to 18% open rate. Now, some people might think, oh, that's crazy. That's terrible. No, that's average. Um, I've had people say, uh, oh, I thought I was going to get like an 80, 90% open rate. And they, they're freaking out. And they're like, I only got, you know, this, I only got 25%. I'm like, 25%, that's higher than the average. So just keep in mind that, you know, everything isn't about um, high, high numbers. Okay. It's really more about the quality of your list and the people who are constantly, consistently opening your emails. Those are the people that you want to focus on, not the people who aren't reading them because, you know, in the future, they're not communicating with you, they're not connecting with you, and they're not going to be customers. Now, click-throughs is where I was talking about the call to action, any link, uh, any button. And what this does is it measures the success of your email. So first you got people, you know, luckily you, you got somebody to open the email and then you got them to even go further and deeper with you. They clicked on a link. So that shows that they're more interested in what you have. And though, again, those are people that you, if you see like a, um, um, a, a sequence of people who are consistently clicking through, you might want to put them on a separate list, say, segment them to be called like super fans or, uh, 
more, more likely a prospect than somebody else. And then send them more things of what they're clicking on. It identifies these engaged readers. So if you look on the right side, it says, um, this is the reporting tab in Constant Contact. It tells you um, how many people clicked, uh, what your percentage is uh, based on your industry. Now, how do they know your industry? Well, once you set up your profile, and you can do this anytime, but I do it for my clients at the beginning when I set up their accounts, I, I put in, you know, how many people are, what, what is your industry? The last few like five questions. What industry are you in? Uh, what are you using emails for? Are you using them for information? Are you using them for, for, for surveying people? Are you going to be also using social media? So they get to know um, the comparisons between you and other people in your industry. And that's just going to help you. So the more you fill out any profile, even on social media, the more information you give, the more you're going to get back. So here it shows the URLs that were in the emails. And then it tells you what the unique clicks were. So this particular, uh, it looks like it's probably an article, got the most clicks. So in this case, in this constant contact, um, sent out an email, um, it would say, well, I should probably write more things about that subject because 95% of the people clicked on that link. So it was obviously it was more interesting than the other links that, that were in there. So the industry average for your click-throughs is between five and 18%. So it usually it's gonna be you know, lower than the open rate. You get more opens. And then the, again, the people who are, are digging deeper with you are going to be a little bit less. And people who didn't open obviously is the opposite of who did open, but these are just showing you like what are the most important reporting aspects. So if somebody didn't open, that means that you need to re-engage them somehow. Um, it could be, again, the subject line. So you want to test new methods and the industry average here, 72% to 92%. And who opted out? Usually it's very, it's a very slim margin here. It's less than 1%. Okay. So uh, the opt-outs will let you obviously get more information. Uh, you're getting feedback from people to figure out, you know, what's better, what do they want to hear more of? And then again, it's all about strategy. So you got to figure out and change your strategy. You can't just keep the same strategy over and over because it's going to be a point where it's just not going to work anymore. So you have to change with what is working and what's not working. And then bounces. And bounces are basically emails that never got to reach the person. It didn't even get into their email inbox. And there are a few different reasons. So one of them can be that maybe um, the, the person was on your email list that they were added like five years ago and they no longer work for that company. Maybe when you entered the email address, if you uploaded it through a spreadsheet or if you um, typed it in yourself, you may have entered it incorrectly. Maybe you did um, .or instead of .org. So you can check these and go back and see why they bounced. Um, sometimes they bounce because um, their, their um, inbox is full. They haven't, you know, they've reached their capacity and they can't get any more emails. And then uh, another one could be that the, the email address is just a, a bad email address, that it's, it's a fake email address. So uh, these are things that you can, where you can clean up your list by getting rid of them, um, constant contact and your service will let you know what they recommend, you know, who they recommend for removal so that you can make room for people who are opening your emails. And industry averages for bounces, it's usually on the lower side, about the two, about two percent, two to five percent. So now let's let's do some some strategic things about making decisions. If you get your low open rates, how can you improve them? Well, make sure your name is recognizable. Uh, make sure you're writing good, compelling subject lines. Good subject lines some can sometimes be things that are like numbers, like Three tips, three tips for um, avoiding spring allergies or um, um, any numbers like uh, three things to avoid when, you know, networking or on Zoom or something like that. So things like numbers will, will help to get more opens. Sending them, obviously, checking and testing the time that you're sending out emails. You can also do A-B testing, which just means that you take two different subject lines and you're not sure which to use, which one is going to be better. 
and then you send part of one of your lists, the first subject line, and then you send a part of your list, the second subject line. Then you see which one got more opens, you know, wait a day or so, you know, don't do it, you can't do it the same day, but wait a day or so. Um, the service will let you know which one got the win, and then you send that subject line to the rest of the email list, and that's how you test it. So if you get low clicks, some strategies is have a stronger call to action. Maybe you didn't have a, a button that stood out. Maybe you just used a link. Maybe you didn't use a contrasting color. Maybe the, uh, the text on your link wasn't good enough for people to want to click on. Keep your email short and sweet. If you send an email weekly, then 20 lines of text should be plenty. Um, if you're sending a monthly email, you might have more text in there. Um, if you want to promote like a blog and a blog is a thousand words, then what you would do is just put a couple of the lines of the blog and then you have a read more button where somebody could click on it and open up and go to your website. So it's a way also to be promoting your website. You know, not just keeping people on your email page. Um, what I love about email marketing um, and using a service is that you, every time you create an email campaign, the company will give you a dedicated link for that email. So all you have to do is copy the link and then you can share it to social media as a post. You know, you choose the picture that you want um, and you write a little bit about it. And then when you send it out, if anybody clicks on the link, they're opening up your email. So they don't, they may not be on your list. However, they read your email, they can get on your list that way. So you can do that in, uh, you can't do that on, on Instagram because Instagram only allows a link in the bio, but um, you, you can actually do that if you change the link, um, you know, for that day. But if you want to keep something, then you can put it in, um, in a regular post in Facebook, LinkedIn, and, and Twitter. Okay, so uh, so keeping the email short and then also obviously, you know, send the targeted email, segment your list, niche down, you know, as far as you can in order to keep the people interested. All right, so we went over a lot. We went over um, subject lines, uh, email campaign design, clickable links, calls to action, how to improve your opens, the reporting. And now we're just gonna put, put everything together, wrap it up in a tight little bow. So here again is um, a recap of what a successful email campaign would look like. Your subject line should be six to 10 words, uh, 30 to 40 characters maximum. Include, you know, the name that people know you know you mostly. Uh, I, I recommend first name, last name, um, and company name. Okay, write uh, extra pre-header text that will show up on someone's inbox as part of the subject line. So it's almost like a second subject line. Make your logo uh, clickable, keep it in the center or to the left of the uh, top of the page. Communicate with your images. So make sure your image uh, is in context with your content. Less than three or more pictures is best. Um, keeping your text to 20 lines or less. Of course, you know, you can't do this for every email. It's not going to be, you're not looking for perfection. Okay. You're just looking for the best that you can do. So don't kick yourself if, if, if you're looking at this and you're saying, oh my God, this, I can't send this email. It's got 20, 21 lines of text, you know, or you have more than one link. Remember, it's all about testing. You have to figure out what's going to work for you. I mean, what works for me might not work for you. So you be yourself, you know, uh, work at your own pace, run your own race, the whole thing. Um, you know, you have to do you. Include the clear call to action, make the, make the, um, your button, you know, stand out. Minimize your links, add your brand colors. Don't use more than three or four colors. I mean, white and black aren't considered colors in email. So, um, in addition to that, you could use like three other colors. Just don't get crazy with the color. Like in this case, it's cohesive. So um, 
this information here of their classes is, is all in one color. I would not like make yoga for kids one color and then every week in another color and then work out. So keep it visually pleasing. Um, if you wanted something specific to stand out, like if you wanted, it, let's just say that the vinyasa flow yoga um, wasn't um, a popular class, then either there's two things you could do, move it up to the top or make it stand out with a different color, but try to keep it within uh, three colors. And then add this to the social media buttons. They are best when they're at the bottom because if you have it at the top, people might just click on your social media and not even read the email. Um, so it's inconspicuous, ins inconspicuous down here. However, if you're promoting your social media, if you're, if you're new to one of the platforms, then you might just create a whole email about following you on one of the platforms. And then in that case, you would put it at the top. So maybe you would just have Facebook at the top and then have the rest of them at the bottom. So you choose, you can change the colors, you can change the, um, the shapes of them as well. And here are three steps, three steps for you to get started. Get your contact list together. And if you don't even have a contact list, remember you get that dedicated link with every email that you create and you can send it out to your social media platforms. Uh, create the email and hit send. And then my most favorite, see what happens, right? You're gonna test it, see what happens. You'll get all excited when you get your first opens and you're like, oh, people wanna hear from me. And, um, it's a good feeling, it definitely is. And um, that's uh, basically your email 101 and 101 and 102. And um, I want to thank you. I'm going to take questions. I'm sorry, I didn't ask questions in between. I meant to. <laughs> um, and that was a mouthful. I was trying to get done, you know, within the hour. And uh, if you have any other questions that you think of after the presentation, you know, please feel free to uh, email me here or here's my phone number.